Welcome back to another episode of Mining Now. Today on the show, we're going to have two guests um, from uh, Data Mine or Data Mine, depending on which part of the world you're, you're in. I got corrected. So um, we're going to have two different guests. We're going to have Jonathan Graham. He's a general manager at Data Mine Australia, and Essa Imanen. He is the VP of Customer Experience and Marketing at Data Mine. Um, we're going to cover quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of ground in this episode, um, and from a few different angles. So, lots of exciting stuff. Before we jump into that, though, uh, we'll let you know we're still. This is part of our Australian leg of the heavy industry tour. So, this is being filmed from iMark. Um, next up is going to be uh, Indaba. That's going to be in Cape Town, South Africa. That is. February 6th to 9th, and then after that, we'll be in Florida, hopefully we get good weather there, um, February 21st to 23rd, and that's going to be the PowerGen show, PowerGen International. So um, if you want to be on those episodes, let us know, reach out to us, we'll have links and all ways you can get a hold of us in the description. And of course, a special thanks to Savinaw Equipment for being our tour sponsor and helping us get all over the world. Okay, we're going to bring on Jonathan first. Jonathan, welcome on. Um, glad to have you on the episode. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. It's uh, yeah, good to be here in uh, in sunny Sydney. And uh, for all those watching, it's day to mind. My English accent uh, <laughs> definitely uh, puts it in that direction rather than dark mind. Okay. But, uh, either is either is fine. <laughs> well, I just filmed the promo, and then I realized I so I said it data the whole the whole time. And uh, but if I just say it both ways enough, everybody will know who I'm talking about. I hope exactly. <laughs> so that's exactly right. Um, okay, let's uh, let's just give us the overview uh, of data mine. Um, just as a company, sort of from a global reach standpoint, uh, let, let's sort of pack in that, who the company is. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So Data Mine's a um, mining technology firm. Um, it's been over 40 years in the industry. So one of the longest, I'd say, one of the longest running technology firms probably in any, in any sector. Um, currently have offices in about 20, oh, Sorry, 13 countries, about 26 offices around the world. Wow. Uh, and got over 600 people working for us um, in, a range of, uh, in a range of roles, um, generally engineers and geologists. So I think roughly half of our uh, team are actually um, engineers and geologists, so the technical consultants, and uh, a healthy dose of uh, R&D people as well in technical hubs in various offices around the world. So... Yeah, so our, our heritage, yeah, 40 years in the industry, um, we've primarily focused on point solutions for, for desktop for use by geologists and engineers um, in, in, in technical roles in, in head office and in operations, um, looking at you know, geological modeling, mine planning. Um, and over the, over the past, um, well, yeah, over the past sort of 10 or 15 years, we've expanded our, our capabilities and the, you know, Different um, different applications that we've created for, for different personas in, in the mining value chain, and um, yeah, certainly the last five years has been pretty transformative for data mine. You know, we've, um, we've we've done quite a few key acquisitions of, of, of new technology firms that have really added to our um, our capability and what we can offer our clients. Um, uh, just for from your position as a GM, uh, of course, we'll talk about some of that outlooks things on, from Essa's side as well when he comes on. Um, but as a company with sort of this this rich history in the industry, but now sort of transforming and bringing in these different streams, uh, is is there a lot of communication? And I, I'm talking about on the ground level with your customers, with your team, getting them communicating it right. What has that sort of process been like? Oh look, it's uh, I guess it's, it's had its challenges, but it's been very rewarding. Mm. I mean, ultimately, data mines reach um, in 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 our I guess uh, the, the original company with, with those point solutions. You know, we we've got customers all over the world, and we've got um, you know touch points at tier one right through to um, consultancy firms. So you know, we we we're already talking to the customers um, when we make acquisitions. We we find that, that you know that 
similar customers. It's just different people within those companies that we're, we're now talking to with those new products that we, we acquire. And essentially, it's um, yeah, re rewarding in the sense that you know we can just offer our customers more, you know, end-to-end -end solutions from exploration, geology, modeling, mine planning, operations, and, uh, and an extra layer of um, enterprise solutions for you know material tracking and, and intelligence around you know handling data. The um, you know all of that data that and there's so much data that's generated by mines these days. So making use and um, practical sense of that data, other things that we can offer. So, so look, I guess it's been rewarding. Um, and, you know, when, when, when Datawine makes an acquisition, um, you know, we retain the brand. We obviously retain all of the technical staff and expertise that comes mm -hmm. with, those, um, with those acquisitions, which is, which is really crucial because it's people that make up the products at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, you, the expertise that we, we acquire with, with the companies is, um, you know, it's, 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 it, it, it's, it's just as important as the technology. Process automation is a byproduct of the massive South African mining industry, which was served from conception and grew into a leading mass measurement instrumentation manufacturing company. Process Automation is the original equipment manufacturer of conveyor belt scales, density gauges, weight feeders, level gauges, blocked chute detectors, speed sensors and switches, and bin, silo and hopper weighing systems. Their strengths are in their expertise, professionalism, and strong focus on after-sales support. This results in a successful outcome on every project. To learn more, go to process-auto.com. Process automation, if you can process it, we can measure it. Okay, so let's give a special thank you to one of our longest sponsors of the show, Savannah Equipment. And I'm actually going to hand it over to Jared so that he can give you a little bit more info on Savannah Equipment. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's... Yeah, so I mean, people see them as sponsors, so they'll ask me, you know, kind of who they are, what they are, and just trying to understand the scope of the company. So, Savannah Equipment is a mining supply company, and they're delivering on the whole equipment supply chain. So, everything from the ore processing to underground mining, open pit, they're in hard rock and placer operations. And what they're doing is they're sourcing equipment from all over the world and then delivering it all over the world. Now, they are a Canadian company, so they're based there. But, you know, let's say, I mean, they're selling entire ore processing plants. So there might be a plant down in Latin America. And there's a new mine that needs that plant in Africa or somewhere in the U.S. So they're facilitating that entire transaction. But they're also delivering, you know, an individual conveyor or a concentrator or a pump package, or just an electrical package. So it really is the whole gambit of the mining equipment supply chain. Oh, well, that's great then. Well, then you definitely have to check them out if you're looking for mining equipment. Visit them at SavannahEquipment.com, where you will find more equipment every day. Geograph is Australia's leading manufacturer of enhanced performance mining parts. Geograph designs and manufactures enhanced wear parts to suit major mining mach machinery from Caterpillar, Komatsu, Hitachi, Liebherr, and more. The Geograph Enhanced Performance range is designed to reduce downtime and operating costs for mine sites and off-site repairers by engineering wear parts to last longer. Geograph challenges you to expect more from yourself and your assets. Visit geograph.com.au for more information or click the link in the video description below. There's something that really fascinates me with companies like Datamine is that your systems that you develop um, and your deliverables are the, a very consistent product, uh, but you're, you're operating around the world, and that's sort of this beautiful thing about mining. Um, but you're based in Australia, so I just was kind of curious from the perspective of, you know, obviously it's a global company, but with your focus on Australia, sort of uh, the, key, the key areas of focus for data mine and just sort of painting as a, a picture of the, the operations within the Australian market. Certainly. Well, I guess, um, you know, contextually, back in sort of um, 2015 or so, we were, the Perth office in particular was, was pretty small. There were only three of us. And if we fast forward to where we are now in 2022, we've had a couple of office moves and, um, you know, we're now in St. George's Terrace. We've got uh, 70 in the office. So there's been some significant growth. Um, obviously, that's organic through, you know, just hiring additional capability to our team, but, but also, 
acquiring additional members of the team through through the M and A activity. Um, so, in, in terms of the you know the focus of the Australian client base, it's it, it, it's really grown you know in line with the you know the capability that we can actually offer our our clients now. And so, uh, a lot of that is really down to now educating our clients that we can offer so much more. Um, you know, for example, um, can think of I can, can think of multiple companies who've been using one of our products for you know for 20 plus years and we we had generally been talking to the the geology team for example but through some recent acquisitions they're you know they're now using our um, enterprise software across a few operations and, and they're using our mine planning software through another acquisition and so you know educating is really having meetings with senior management and mm. saying you know data miner way more than you know just this company that you've been dealing with only for geological modeling, for example, and you know, you look at all of this that we're actually offering you now, and you know, it's um, it's certainly fulfilling for myself to to sort of see you know, um, you know, senior people with it within our our, our client base just go, wow, you know, didn't really realise we actually did that much business with data mine, and 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 right. and, and really that sort of um, allows them, I guess, mentally to open up a lot more to. To some of the other solutions that we can offer them because you know there's a lot of um interlinking between our solutions and there's a lot of benefit involved with uh, that interoperability as well so you know it's it, it, it certainly unlocked doors for us for sure so i guess day to day the you know the, the teams that we have they're still you know we've, we've got um specific teams supporting ind individual applications and, and you know that that never really stopped um it's just you know my job and 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 and, and some of my the colleague's job is, is really to work with senior management for our, our well, all of our companies, just to, I guess, promote the awareness of, of, of all of these other solutions that DataMine can now provide and, 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 and are providing. You know, something that came to my mind is this, you know, selling something is one thing, then even implementation. We've done a lot of conversation on the show talking about implementation. But I, I was thinking, especially with a company that's sort of expanded, there's acquisitions, acquisitions happening. Um, what is sort of the approach that you have, um, and sort of, and and also that sort of pushed to, gets pushed out to your team for that post deliverable, that support that the customers need um, after they adopt the the systems. Yeah. Well, it's absolutely the most important part of our business. Um, you know, we wouldn't be anywhere without our customers, and you know we. We're not a company that just sells a product, trains it, and walks away and moves on to the next one. Um, you know, we work we work heavily with our clients because ultimately, you know, the whole point of our software is is, is, to, is to help them out with uh, you know with productivity gains, you know, making making life easier for them, and you know, having that maintaining that relationship is is, is key. So, you know, we we've got um, you know a whole team in in, in our offices. Uh, globally, who, who specifically work on customer support, oh. and there are several, there are several different, um, I, I guess, things involved with that. You know, there's, there's obviously monitoring support. You know, if people have issues with, with the software, they'll they'll log they'll log tickets, and 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 those will get resolved by the the support team. But uh, I mean, that's sort of minimum expectation. Um, but over and above that, we we do regular site visits, um, and these often involve you know, showing what's new in the latest version, spending a couple of days on site and just doing that change management just to make sure that they're utilizing the new functionality and, and getting the best value out of it. And um, we, in particular, do professional development um, events for our, our customer base in Australia. Um, next week, for example, we're holding a geology symposium in um, at the, the Hilton in Barrack Street. And we've got over 100 delegates who've signed up. And it's a, it's a totally free event. We've got, uh, I think, eight or nine industry presentations. You know, it's not a sort of sales event for data mine. It's pure professional development. We've got customers who are coming and talking about issues that they've they've um, faced on site and what they've gone to, to, to what what they've implemented to sort of mitigate them. You know, and you can learn a lot from your peers at these sorts of events. Um, so, so that's that's you know another thing that's really good. You know, and also. I guess working with our customers regularly on site and through the acquisitions we make, that's another way mm. that we obviously can give them information about new products that we may have acquired that could be could be helpful to them as well. Because um, there's, you know, 
most of the acquisitions we make are, are highly complementary. You know, they may be uh, they may be many of them, but um, you know they're not obscure. They're you know they're, they're deliberately complementary so that we can add more value for our clients. What about on the um, like the do you do as a company like Datamine do any work on like working with like academia and sort of merging that with industry? Do you sort of have an approach like that that you can talk about? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a good point. Look, I mean, first and foremost, so we you know we work with uh, all of the main universities in in in, uh, in Australia and 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 I I think globally as well supported by our regional offices, you know, we supply academic licenses and, oh. and often our, um, you know, on an annual basis, our, our um, consultancy team will go and train the, you know, the students as part of their curriculum in, in you know, the mind planning or mind design or geostats, whatever, whatever software we would be working with the university on. Um, but in addition to that, we do do some industry and, uh, and, and academic partnerships. Um, we've recently been a, a founder technology partner, the ERDI Test Lab, which is um, which is based based in Perth, which is looking at setting interoperability standards um, for operational software. And um, you know, it may, may seem an obscure obscure topic, but if you think about all the different sort of operation operational platforms that there are out there, from fleet management systems, material tracking systems, to um, reconciliation solutions. You know they're all quite proprietary, and and to, to 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 link them together, you've got to sort of configure. Um, you know, you, you, there's, there's got to be a lot of configuration to, to sort of integrate those, those those platforms, which is you know it's hard to support. It's it's time consuming. It costs a lot of money as well. Um, so the, the the focus of this ERDI test lab is really to put a put a standard for interoperability, um, so that actually data can flow seamlessly from you know, fleet management systems, the material tracking system to the scheduling system. And, um, you know, in, in particular, this, this one is um, this the RDI test lab in Perth works with academia and industry. And so we've done some um, industry sponsored projects. And there's, I think there's one that I'm allowed to talk about from Guinea Illumina Corporation, which is a bauxite operation in, in Guinea. Um, and the interoperability that they benefit from now, um, you know, it enables them to be much more agile in their decision making. It's not uh, trying to, you know, looking through spreadsheets to work out how much is on which stockpile, which allows them to make this decision um, down the line. It's, you know, the data is at their fingertips, so they can be much more agile in their planning and scheduling. And I mean, these are these are decisions that can make uh, or save millions of dollars or make millions of dollars on almost a daily basis. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's a particular focus. And it's, I think it's important that um, any any collaboration with the academia is also with industry to sort of you know ground truth some of this new technology and, and, and ensure that it is actually delivering value to the to the uh, customers at the end of the day. And uh, yes, yeah, certainly this one is, is is seemingly delivering a lot of value. So yeah, it's good. Fenner Dunlop Usflex belts are engineered to withstand the harshest applications, delivering benefits that solve customer problems via superior rip, tear, and impact resistance. Usflex are extremely strong and robust belts that are difficult to destroy, which is important for heavy-duty bulk material handling environments. Made in their very own North American manufacturing facilities, this revolutionary concept in straight warp conveyor belting is up to three times more impact resistant versus competitor belting. Usflex users use fewer belts per year, make fewer belt repairs, and replacements, reduce or eliminate belt downtime, and improve employee safety. You can visit FennerDunlopAmericas.com to learn more about their premium Usflex conveyor belting. It's Canada's premier event for mining, metals, and materials professionals. The Canadian Institute of Mining, Metallurgy, and Petroleum will be hosting its annual convention and expo in May in the beautiful city of Montreal. The technical program will feature expertise from a wide range of leaders across industry sectors. Are you working on a project that others in the industry need to know about? Well, let them know. CIM is now seeking presentations on a variety of topics. You can visit them at convention.cim.org to learn more. Introducing the SolarSet Fold. The new foldable frame solar system brings power to your residential and commercial property and can be shipped worldwide. Like all SolarSet products, the SolarSet Fold comes turnkey, pre-assembled, and is easily transported and installed. Learn more about SolarSet Fold and their full line of amazing solar systems at solarset.com. 
You know, we've talked uh, a little bit. It's, it's you know, it's sort of at the the high level across um, uh, for, for this interview. Do you can you sort of bring it home into? Is there sort of a project that stands out that sort of brings it into sort of a real world example uh, of a deliverable and sort of walk us through that process? I think as as uh, is going to give us an example as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And I guess I'd like to talk about an example, which is just true dice mine R&D. So, you know, I, I talked a lot about acquisitions and, mm-hmm. and you know, by acquiring um, new technology, you know, you can offer more, but um, but our R&D teams are still strong in our existing uh, product portfolio. And uh, so, you know, a, 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 recent, um, a recent addition to our capability was uh, dynamic uh, open pit design. So it's a rules-based open pit design process and essentially the, the process of creating an open pit design is, is it's very manual. It's in, in a CAD package. Um, you know, you need to conform to um, operational basic constraints like slope design and, and firm width and, 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 you know, road gradients and things like that. And so typically to create a design could take, you know, a month or more for a large deposit. Um, certainly for the tier one iron ore miners who we've been working with. And so what we offered um, was, you know, through working with them and understanding that, you know, their issues, that there was a, a real opportunity to save them a lot of time. And so we developed um, a, well, dynamic design tools. Essentially, you could set a bunch of rules and at a click of a button, it would create a, create a mine, an open pit mine design, which was, um, yeah, it essentially allowed them to create, you know, three or four potential design scenarios in a day compared to, you know, have it, you know, taken a month to, to, to develop one. And, uh, you know, that w- I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a step change, but, you know, working with our customers, with these iterative changes is, is really crucial to, you know, ensure that we're delivering for the productivity gains that they're after. So uh, it's, it was a pretty rewarding project to be on, you know, getting the feedback that we saved their design engineers, you know, months of work months. and yeah. uh, giving that, them that flexibility. Well, I guess and I'm going to ask, also going to ask Essa some of the similar questions, but I, I wanted to just get your perspective to close out before we jump over to him. Is yeah, um, it's just your perspective of the Australian market in in a sense of wanting to adopt new technologies, adopt new methods. Um, where is it sort of at from your perspective? Well, I think the Australian market is probably similar to a lot of others around the world mm-hmm. where we are constrained by i guess <laughs> i hate using the word talent but uh, you know the 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 skilled operators um mining engineers and mine geologists um you know there's there's i guess they're they're in short supply at the, at, at the moment yeah. um in the industry and, and that, that that seems industry wide and so you know the, a lot of feedback that we get from our clients is is just alluding to the example that i just gave you um what they really need is, is is just these productivity gains. They're paying, you know, engineers a lot of money, and that you know they want to get rid of a lot of these manual processes that are just just time wasting. And I guess everybody wants to go from a sort of zero to hero, step change technology. But yeah. I mean, the reality is that that does take a long time, and um, you know, it, it, it's it's not a, not always successful. Um, so you know, working closely with our customers and ensuring that we're actually developing. And delivering what and, and, and what their requirements are is 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 is, is absolutely important for us. Um, and I guess that, that that probably doesn't change in in our outlook in any case. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and it just it's it's been quite interesting to do this ep- these episodes and sort of now going from around the world doing them, is you start to sort of see the different that that each. Each like the mining operation doesn't change, but just but just the different perspectives of people on the ground, and just it's not so much what they're what they're doing; it's just sort of how they deliver it, how they communicate it. That sort of changes, you know, the necessary steps, you know, that, that it takes to get to get it done. So, very interesting. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on the show, uh, Jonathan, and uh, we'll uh, let's jump I'm over to Essa and. Uh, yeah, hope we get you back on soon. And one of I th- we're doing three more with you, so yeah. uh, hopefully we get you in for one of them. Sounds good. Okay, thank Thanks, you, sir. Yeah, appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Take care. See ya. That's not great to have you on. Uh, thanks, thanks for doing the the show. Uh, a a bit, uh, probably organizing um, all the moving parts at IMART. Yeah, great to be on the show, Jared. Thanks for having me on too. Uh, okay, so we kind of we 
we we actually covered a lot of ground with Jonathan, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna kind of shift gears if you uh, uh, for you on a couple things. Can you can you sort of outline the deliverable, the software, the hardware, sort of how it all comes together? I mean, we're doing four episodes, so obviously we're gonna spend a lot more time unpacking it. But um, can you just sort of lay it out for the audience, and then if you could maybe even dovetail that maybe into like, like what we did with Jonathan, a real world example, kind of put it all together. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Jared, I guess, uh, overall we are a software provider, but we do have uh, some hardware solutions as well. Again, it's where we've really just had a look where our customers are struggling or there's something that's not in the market where we thought, okay, let's find out where we can plug that gap. And probably the easiest way for me to run through is like looking at a, a mine to mill process. And so that's where we're looking, you're talking about blasting, going through crushing and through to the mill. And so what we see there, so we can have, I guess, some software uh, solutions, looking at how do you plan your blasting timing, then looking at the grade con control perspective. But one of the key elements that comes out of blasting is fragmentation. And so we look at how can we measure that, because that's one of the real control processes of, of mine to mill. And so we have a, a product called Whipware, which is a fragmentation analyzer. So that can either be a, a, a live on stream analyzer or a truck tipping point. And that just gives real time uh, understanding to operations of, uh, I guess, their fragmentation and allows them some decision points to be able to, be able to control their process. Uh, another component that sort of fits in there as well is uh, a sensor mine product. So it picks up the vibration and heat sensor, of, I guess, two of the main components there. Again, this is something that we can you know, provide to maintenance teams where they're looking at uh, I guess reliability, or reliability of equipment. So if you put a sensor onto uh, a bearing per se, you know, we'll be able to get some live data from that um, that gets fed through to a system which will analyze the, the vibration coming through and let you know uh, what sort of, uh, if there's failure happening and also let you understand, you know, what's the timing of the failure that might come up. So they can actually plan their day and not just look at going into um, uh, reactionary maintenance and because generally when you have unplanned maintenance, it's just more costly. Yeah, and I guess when we have a look at our software and hardware solutions, one of the key components is you know, they all generate data points. And so one of the things that we also um, have pulled together is I guess some reporting tools or some analytical tools to really give that a uh, higher level view of an operation to like a senior management. So they can understand what lever they need to pull to get some efficiency within their business. Um, as I, before I let you go, um, we've covered a lot of ground in this episode, but I want to cover two more things. I wanted to look uh, just sort of the, the data mine outlook for the year. I mean, there's there's been a lot going on in the last five years, um, which we've covered some Absolutely. of that. Um, what what is just sort of a short term next year or so looking like for for data mine? And then I want to uh, before I let you go talk a little bit about ESG. Yeah, I guess an outlook for us is that you know really having the finger on the pulse of the industry. You know, where's the industry going? What are the challenges they're having? Uh, so I guess we get feedback from our customers, and I guess some of our own research. But just look at some reports that uh, KPMG and also EY have produced. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where they've had a look at uh, I guess the or the interviewed executives from a lot of the mining companies, and just getting a feel on what do they see is the the biggest risk for the upcoming year, and all of them are saying ESG is number one. And then as, you know, I guess, as we flow down from there, you know, social license to operate, uh, commodity pricing, you know, geopolitical risk. Uh, and probably one of the other ones that's really coming up is, I guess, the, um, the war for talent. You know, the industry mm -hmm. seems to be, be short on talent. And so they're struggling to find people to actually uh, come and fill roles. And so, so we sort of, I guess, get, look at these signals and look at, you know, how do we pivot and actually support the industry with, with the challenges they're having. And hence, that's where the ESG portfolio comes into it. But also just the um, you know, talent crisis and also looking at uh, digital transformation. So how do we assist them moving through? So from a talent perspective, I guess a lot of them will be, a lot of companies will be looking at, uh, if we don't have people, we still need these jobs to be done. So how do we automate? So looking at how that flows through workflows, through the geology, planning, and then also operation. So it's really just working with the industry to understand you know, where the critical touch points they have at that point in time and working out how we can help them you know, move, move through those. 
Um, you, you talked, you touched on ESG already. Uh, can you, uh, can you sort of expand on that, that outlook of the industry, um, and, and how that ties into your, your deliverable and your sort of that value add, uh, from data mine? Yeah. And I, I think ESG, ESG is a fairly new acronym as well, but the way I like to look at it is just pure sustainability. And when I say sustainability, I don't uh, mean just environmental. So I think all the industry... All our, uh, all the industry we're looking at, it, how do they have sustainability across the board? So environmental is one. I guess our financial sustainability as well. I like guess sustainable communities they need to operate in. So I guess we've looked at that and go, well, how do we uh, provide some context or some tools to allow them to go through? So I guess some of our uh, ESG solutions or sustainability solutions, I should say, that really looks at. Um, the challenges have got, like, particularly from a reporting perspective. So mm. there's a lot of uh, data points coming in. So really, how do we capture those and, again, pull them together to create, uh, I guess, meaningful decision points or decision ability for, for the senior team? But then, then some of the other areas that they're challenged on is, is uh, the level of reporting they need to do as well for uh, different regulatory providers. So it's looking at how do we actually generate those reports from all the data that these businesses are capturing. Is there is there ever a challenge of communicating what can be captured? Do minds realize how much data and not just how much data, I think people are pretty aware of that you can capture it, but that it can be manageable as well. Is that still a challenge or or have or companies like DataMine do they have the ability to showcase it pretty simply now or is it still sort of a uh, a a trip up for some companies when they're tr- when they're trying to adopt these new technologies and new methods. Yeah, yeah great question, Jared. Because yeah, the just the uh, proliferation of, of data uh, through the industry, I think, is a real struggle. It's like an, an ocean of data with uh, with the I guess the invent of Internet of Things. So they're yeah. capturing data from all these different data points, and it comes down down to uh, you know what's the important data that we actually need to be looking at to be able to go well how does that link with our whole operational workflow and understanding you know, where are the critical decision points that we need to look and you know, what are the ones actually giving us input or valuable input to be able to change something and so that's I'd say the, one of the main challenges with the proliferation of data coming through is that understanding what's the right data that they should be looking at uh, mm-hmm. And so for us, you know, we've looked at that as well. Um, and we, we do have some solutions and some tools in that realm that can pull information from multiple sources, whether it's the data mine product or, or some other product. So we, we like to have a bit of an agnostic view. But essentially, we look at uh, pulling this information up and working with the industry as well to go, you know, what, is, what are the key or the critical uh, decision elements that they need to make uh, whether it's day to day or month to month, uh, and just one of the things that we see that um, the industry is trying to work through is, is essentially having decisions being made. So some of the lower level decisions, you know, if we've got the information coming through, mm. so using machine learning and uh, and AI, and pulling together and actually getting some insights there, and actually making those lower level decisions, so the team can actually start looking at the more complex critical decisions they need to make to uh, to keep their business sustainable. You know, um, as a, I, <laughs> I'm re- really glad you're doing four episodes with us. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'll say. There's so much to cover. Um, this really was the intro episode. Uh, and I know we're going to really pick out, you know, very key examples and case studies. And we're going to be unpacking things um, over the next several months. Uh, it's going to be lots of fun, but I just want to thank you both for coming on the show and uh, and look forward to the next three episodes with you. Excellent. Great, Jared. I appreciate your time as well. And uh, thanks for having uh, or setting up this time at iMark. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to use the energy in the crowd. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Great, thanks. Thank you for watching this episode. Uh, there's plenty more to come. We're going to be filming, uh, I think we're doing 10 or so episodes at iMark, and then we're going to be uh, heading to Perth a few days after that to film, I think, five or so more. So lots coming at you. Please keep supporting the show. Thank you to Savonar Equipment for helping us get all over the world. And for um, Data Mine or Data Mine, um, I, I hope I'm <laughs> – I know I'm saying it right to somebody. Um, thank you, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode of Mining Now.